Under international law, states have to settle their disputes peacefully. In this knowledge clip, we are going to look at what peaceful settlement of dispute means, which are the tools at the disposal of states in order to do so, and then in the last part of the presentation, we are going to focus on the International Court of Justice and on the arbitration. But first of all, what is a general, an international dispute? This is, of course, a very fundamental question because only for international disputes can state use the uh, dispute settlement tools. So, in uh, uh, 1924, the uh, Permanent Court of Justice uh, gave the first definition of a dispute, which is still used nowadays. A dispute is a disagreement on a point of law or fact, a conflict of legal views. The existence of such a dispute is a matter of objective determination and this has been affirmed by the ICJ in 1950. Traditionally, disputes are between uh, subjects of international law, so primary states and international organizations. Uh, but recently, uh, in, well in the last uh, decades, we have seen uh, an evolution and we have more and more international cases involving individuals and states. Think for instance about uh, human rights cases or investment arbitrations. Uh, what is the peaceful settlement of disputes? Where do we find the legal basis for that? Well, first of all, we have to look at uh, the UN Charter, Article 2, with, uh, from, um, with which I'm sure we are quite familiar by now. Uh, in its paragraph 3, we find uh, the uh, affirmation that states uh, shall settle their international dispute by peaceful means. And this is, of course, a direct uh, consequence of uh, the prohibition of the use of force uh, for, uh, in international relations that we find in uh, paragraph 4 of the same article. Until uh, the 19th century, the use of force was actually a, a, a legal means in order to settle a dispute. With the prohibition of the use of force, states have to uh, resort to other means and those means have to be peaceful. So which are those means? Uh, Article 33 of the UN Charter uh, give us a list of uh, peaceful means that states can use in order to settle their disputes. These means can be either diplomatic or judicial. Diplomatic means are, for instance, negotiation, which consists very simply uh, in uh, the uh, meeting of the two uh, parties to the dispute uh, without the intervention of any third party. Uh, this is the means the most used in international relations. This is as well the most uh, well known in a sense because uh, often negotiations actually take place uh, behind uh, closed doors. Um, the second uh, means here listed is the good offices and I put it between brackets because it's not in, uh, within the list of Article 33 but it is widely used in international relations and it consists in the intervention of the third party uh, which will not actually suggest any solution or which will not help the parties to reach the final agreement but which will act simply as channel of communication. This is often the case uh, when uh, the two parties to the dispute actually have interrupted their diplomatic relations. The third uh, means is mediation and in this case the third party will actively uh, intervene in the dispute and will uh, not only eventually uh, work as a, a channel of communication but will also help the parties to actually find a solution. Uh, this is very similar to conciliation uh, where again the third party has an active role and, uh, and in this case in the, in the conciliation procedure the third party has even a more structured role uh, with a, a specific procedure and uh, the conciliation ends with uh, the adoption of a conciliation report uh, in which uh, specific uh, solutions as well on legal points are suggested to the parties. 
the inquiry or fact-finding procedure is actually a means which can be used uh, auto, uh, alone or in combination with any of the other means. And it consists in the creation of a fact-finding mission which will just ascertain the facts. This could be enough to solve the dispute when, of course, the disagreement between the parties concern, uh, concerns uh, the facts. Um, or it can be a, a starting point uh, to then solve as well the legal issues. Um, in the diplomatic means, what is important to keep in mind is that the outcome of the diplomatic means is not binding for the parties to the dispute. It's up to them to then uh, accept the uh, final outcome has uh, the solution to the dispute or not. This is of course very different than the judicial mechanisms uh, such as arbitration or um, the final judgment adopted by a permanent court of tribunal which have uh, has a final outcome, a binding decision for the state. So it creates legal obligations for the parties to the dispute. Let's see now the International Court of Justice, which is, of course, uh, the most important uh, international permanent court, and as well among the oldest. Uh, first of all, the, uh, well, the International Court of Justice is located in this uh, very uh, nice building in The Hague at the Peace Palace. It is composed of 15 judges which are elected by the UN General Assembly and the Security Council on the basis of the proposition by states. It has uh, three different functions uh, in the field of contentious cases. It can adopt as well provisional measures pending the decision on the merit, and those provisional uh, measures are binding for the parties to the dispute. This has been affirmed very clearly by the court in the Lagrande case in 2001, and it can also adopt advisory opinions. Uh, the court has a jurisdiction in a contentious cases uh, only uh, for states, so only states can actually bring uh, contentious cases in front of the court. Uh, states have to consent to the jurisdiction of the court and uh, if they can express this consent uh, in three different ways, either uh, on the basis of a compulsory clause which is inserted in the uh, treaty which is at the basis of the dispute, or through a compromis, which is an, uh, a specific, a special agreement adopted by the parties to the dispute after the dispute has arisen, and in order to bring the claim in front of the ICJ. And the third option is actually an optional declaration that states can adopt on the basis of Article 36, Paragraph 2 of the ICJ Statute, in which they recognize the jurisdiction of the court before any dispute has, uh, has come into being. Once the court has ascertained its uh, jurisdiction, uh, the court has as well to make sure that the claims are admissible. In order to do so, it has to look at uh, three uh, things. First of all, whether the claim is legally founded, uh, whether the party bringing the claim has exhausted uh, the local remedies, and the third point is whether the facts uh, or uh, the violation which is invoked by the party bringing the claim can actually be linked uh, to uh, the state uh, through the nationality uh, link. Uh, the procedure in front of the court uh, takes place uh, in this uh, hall that you have here in the, in the picture at the corner, the bottom corner, and it consists of uh, two phases, a uh, written phase, uh, which is the uh, actual submission of the memorials and the exchange of the memorials, and then an uh, oral phase, which are the oral pleadings. At the end of the procedure, the court will adopt uh, the final decision, which is a judgment, a binding judgment, and uh, judges are uh, actually uh, able to submit as well separate opinions or dissenting opinions, which are then um, annexes uh, to the final decision. Uh, 
The court can also adopt advisory opinions and uh, those opinions can be requested by the UN General Assembly, the Security Council or uh, international organization. Uh, has these uh, actors cannot bring a contentious claim, they have the possibility to bring um, an a request for advisory opinion. The uh, jurisdiction of the court in uh, cases of advisory opinions is limited to the uh, competences or the mandate of the international organization. So as well the international organization cannot bring a request for advisory opinion on issues which are not included in its own competences of, or mandate. Um, you might wonder what is the legal value of an advisory opinion. Um, well, it is not binding, of course. Huh? It's an advisory opinion, it's not a judgment, but it is considered highly authoritative how, uh, because it's from the ICJ and uh, so it gives an authoritative interpretation of the relevant rules of international law. Let's see now, uh, to conclude this presentation, what is arbitration? Um, arbitration is a, a specific uh, procedure which can in particular take place in the permanent court of justice uh, or arbitration, sorry. <laughs> the permanent court of arbitration um, is actually not a court. Uh, but it is the permanent administration uh, which was created in 1899 uh, in The Hague, in Adobe Palace as well. And within this uh, permanent structure, uh, states can actually start uh, ad hoc arbitrations. Um, in arbitration, in the, uh, the parties actually create a tribunal after the dispute uh, actually emerged. So this is the main difference with the permanent courts. The permanent courts or tribunals are already there, uh, already exist and the uh, judges have been already, uh, are already in place when the dispute arises. Uh, for uh, arbitration, is, uh, uh, arbitration, the tribunal actually comes into being after uh, the dispute has started. So the first step is for the parties to actually appoint uh, the arbitrators and then the arbitrators will uh, adopt uh, the rules of procedures. The procedure uh, actually follows the one of the ICJ. We have a written phase with the submission of the memorials and an oral phase uh, with the pleadings and the procedure will end with the adoption of a final award. That's the name of uh, the um, final decision of uh, uh, arbitral tribunal and this award is uh, binding, has the judgment of the ICJ and thus creates uh, legal obligations for the parties to the dispute.